Hello, dear students, seekers of knowledge and young aspirants. It is my pleasure to welcome you all in this massive open online course. This is offered by IGNU through the platform of SWAM. It will be immensely beneficial for the student of literature. Today, we are going to deal with one of the greatest intellectual and Indian writing in English. His name is Nirodsi Chaudhary. Nirodsi Chaudhary is one of the greatest intellectuals and writers in modern India. He was born on November 23rd into a middle class family in Kisuganj, a small town in Maimansing district of East Bengal, nowadays known as Bangladesh. He was educated in Bengal and took his BA honors degree from the University of Calcutta. He studied MA degree in history but was unsuccessful in the examination. Even as a school child, he was fascinated by books and intellectual life. According to C.R. Mandy, I had hardly met an Indian writer, said C.R. Mandy, once with such coruscating intelligence, his brain dances like fireflies before monsoon. I would always read him cerebrally and stylistically in the top class of Indo-Anglian writers. Nirod Sichodhari was extremely fortunate in his marriage. As Anita Malik puts it, Nirod Si Chaudhuri would not have been what he is without the presence and unfailing support of his wife. In 1955, he went to study abroad for the first time in his life. The British Council arranged for him to visit England where he spent five weeks at the invitation of BBC. His first book was the autobiography of an unknown Indian that made him famous. Though he was denounced as Anglophile, his mastery of English is admired. The book deals with an account of the other side of the sea. The book is divided into four sections, early environment, first 12 years, education, and into the world. Early environment is devoted to the background describing Kisuganj, his ancestral village. First 12 years describes his birth and early life. Education deals with his childhood, his spent at high school and college in Calcutta. Into the world is an essay on the life in Bengal in 1920s rather than an account of Choudhury's life. Choudhury's The Autobiography of an Unknown Indian is a autobiography, history, sociology, anthropology, indology and political analysis. In fact, culture, social acts and social relationships, class distinction, ethnicity, rural and urban communities, family and kinship economic, political, religious, educational, recreational, welfare, and aesthetic institution all find place in Mr. Choudhury's book. The autobiography of an unknown Indian describes the social and political conditions in which an Indian grew to manhood in the early decades of the country. Choudhury's second autobiography, Thy Hand, Great Anarch, composed in the year of 1987. It is an exploratory study of Indian political and social ethos. It opens up in 1921 when he was in search of a job. It reflects the ups and downs of his career as a clerk, journalist and unemployed scholar Gypsy secretary of Sarath Chandra Bosch and broadcaster on AIR. It 
closes with an writing and reception of the autobiography of an unknown indian the greater part of the book deals with politics and social conditions choudhury lived through the crucial period of indian independence and great socio political changes his opinions are debatable but he deserves to be read when britain withdrew from india choudhury felt an almost personal sense of loss the book runs almost a thousand pages it covers the year from 1921 to 1952 it has 10 chapters with a long epilogue these are introduction apologia pro biographia sua livelihood and politics 1921 to 1922 towards a vocation that deals from 1922 to 1925 the scholar gypsy from the time span 1926 to 1928 the gandhian rebellion deals with the time of 1927 to 1932 into the married life it covers the time span in between 1932 to 1937 experience and politics deals with the years of 1937 to 1939 indian enjoys the war from 1939 to 1941 migration to delhi from 1942 to 1945 victor victim from 1945 to 1947 crossing the bar from 1947 to 1952 epilogue credo at intelligam Nirod Sri Chaudhary is one of the greatest intellectuals and artist as per excellence a prolific and versatile writer Chaudhary has written a huge number of essays and articles these are the autobiography of an unknown indian thy hand great anak intellectual in india the continent of sirs a passage to england a travelog to live or not to live and hinduism in nirod si choudhury's work subject always determine his style the autobiography is written in a descriptive prose that requires an acute sense of observation his sentences are long and balanced graceful and flexible imaginative and even poetic for example at kisur ganj the mist hung over the landscape exactly like a veil of fine muslin the autobiography chapter page number 7 or where to walk through the grass was to crush a mass of diamonds originality vigor freshness lucidity resiness and humor characterizes the style of a passage to england his style in the continent of sirs is conspicuous for better and vituperative expression sarcasm and pungent remarks and animal imagery for example but the duality of hindu existence is like a cat and dog life of mal adjusted married couple who can neither separate nor live together in hinduism the bitterness for hinduism has been expressed in a subdued manner the scholar extraordinary is written in a simple clear vigorous and lucid style style in the latest work thy hand great anak choudhury can be prey to petty prejudices but he is never boring bombastic or pointless a profound scholar of english literature Chaudhary is writing a uh, studded with literary allusions he recalls one after another Shakespeare Ben Jonson Jane Austen Milton Dr Johnson Arnold Tennyson Webster Bridges Carlyle Gibbon Hardy and Browning etc K Raghavendra Rao writes Chaudhary's right reading of English literature has gone so deep into his system that he is very elusive about it in order to express indian ethos graphically chaudhary uses indian words both hindi and bengali these are 
अस्ताद फकीर सग्रीत उलेमा मद्रासा रिश्तेदार युद्ध कोलाकोटा भद्रलोक एक्सेट्रा एज अ राइटर चौधरी इज द मोस्ट कॉन्ट्रोवर्सियल ड्यू टू हिज रेडिकल व्यूज ऑन इंडियन हिस्ट्री कल्चर एंड सोसाइटी बट वर्ड डिस्टिंग्विशेज हिज वर्क इज रियल इंटेलेक्चुअल ब्रिलियंस सटल आयरनी एंड ऑरिजिनलिटी बोथ इन थाउट्स एंड एक्सप्रेशन इन दिस रेस्पेक्ट नीरोज सि चौधरी इज अ राइटर पर एक्सलेंस इन मॉडर्न इंडियन इंग्लिश प्रोज Chaudhary is writing a just like an open window through which one can peep into India's culture, society and religion. His keen observation and penetrating insight removes the layer of pseudo sophistication from India's social ethos. He himself writes in his introduction to live or not to live. I have tried to see social life and family life in the light of highest ideals of life to live a happy life in our social family relations in the first stage of living well it will also be seen that i have not shrunk from probing into sociological foundations of our social and family life his another work three horsemen of the new apocalypse the three horsemen are individualism nationalism and democracy which he holds responsible for the decadence which has overtaken civilization the university of oxford honored him with a dilate in 1990 the queen conferred the cbe on him he was a fellow of royal literary society His another work The Continent of Sirs an essay on the peoples of India 1966 provoked a fierce controversy he proposed the thesis that hindus are actually a race alien to india and arrivals from europe modern hindus are descendant from the fair-haired blue-eyed aryans who inhabited the region between volga and danube sirs was a sorceress in greek mythology anyone who drank from her cup was turned into a pig and this was the fate of the companions of odysseus ulysses in the odyssey his biography of clive robert clive of india is overwhelmingly favorable to this nabab who enraged himself through a loot Chaudhary attempts to justify Clive's life on the grounds that the acceptance of brief gift was not contrary to the regulations then in force. Clive page number 260 to 261. Scholar extraordinary the life of the professor R.T. Hon Friedrich Max Muller. Another important work is A Passage to India. A passage is devoted mainly to the glorification of England and English society, culture and literature. Radha Krishnan Murthy rightly observes, India clings to him like a shadow, for it is his shadow, and once again we witness the combat of shadows. Chaudhuri unscrupulously condemns everything Indian, especially everything Hindu. casting aspersion on the hindu way of worship and glorifying english style of worship he writes we go to temples to look on the image of a divine potentate and to reach the ceremonials of his daily life which are modeled on those of a king but certainly the english people did not go to their churches to look on a divine ruler and his daily life the continent of sir is remarkable for the expression of choudhury's highly prejudiced and individualistic idiosyncratic controversial and myopic sociological religious and historical devices of vituperation and seed hatred he fails to see the living dynamic the vibrant and ageless spiritualism of india to live or not to live and evinces choudhury's wisdom and knowledge of life he says much of his prejudice and virulence 
In it, he considered how can we have a happy social and family life under the conditions to which we are born in this country. It is divided into two parts. The first part deals with the social life in India and the second part and the, with the family life. He seems to love his country and countrymen and tells them the first requisite for getting happiness in the company of others is to learn to love unselfishly and make others happy. It is the surest way of getting happiness for ourselves. Chaudhuri emerges as an inveterate Anglophile in his writings. His early upbringing instilled in him great fascination for England and the English way of life. He adds, on the contrary, the older idea was made fuller or more real. That means for me even after experience England of English literature remained the true England. The circumstances of his life and his embittered experience strengthened his Anglomania. He is as loathed by chattering classes in India as he is becoming a cult figure amongst the minute band of Indophile gentry in England. Indeed, he has developed a sort of love-hate relationship with India and the people of India and his approaches, although professedly objective, are necessarily subjected to the pools of his tremendous egotism. He veers dangerously between subjective and objective approaches, between the particular and the general, between the fact and opinion, between past and present. Nirod Sichodhuri is an outstanding prose writer. His matchless craftsmanship and superb style assign him a rare place in Indian English prose. He is aware of his envious role as a writer, but he dislikes to be called an Indian writer. He vehemently declared that I am politically an Indian national by and by birth a Hindu. I have never denied nor shall I, but this is quite irrelevant to my writings in English, even when living in India. I used to say, so far as I write in English, I do show in Bengali as well. I am not an Indian writer, but a writer in India. I refuse to admit racialism in literature. Any literature in any particular language is made one by that language and cannot be classified in racial categories. We do not regard Conrad's novel as Polis examples of writing in English. We do not call Claudian's Latin, Egyptian Latin, nor St. Augustine's Confessions and the City of God examples of African Latin. Why should we then call his English written by an writer of Indian writing in English? Thank you.